Welcome everyone. Our topic for this video will be on working with alerts in vRealize Login Site Cloud. Alerts are a key feature of Login Site Cloud, as developer and operations teams need to know when certain events or thresholds of events are ingested into Login Site Cloud from different log sources. Alerts can notify over email or webhook, so then they can be sent to destinations such as automation or ticketing systems to be acted upon. So let's begin. Once we're logged into our Login Site Cloud homepage, we can go to alerts, and then we can see our alert definitions and our triggered alerts. Under alert definitions, we have a list of all of our alerts that have been created either by content pack or through custom user interaction. So we can search for alerts. So I did a quick search for error and anything with the word error in the description comes up for us. This green toggle shows that our alert is enabled and we can turn it off by toggling it back to gray. And then we can see the severity class given to this alert is informational, where the origin is. Usually it will have an origin if it comes from a content pack. So this alert comes from the vSAN content pack. And then when the alert was created, we can also add tags to alerts. So we can see here that some of these unauthenticated access attempt alerts have a security tag that have been assigned to them. We can assign more tags based on our tags that we have available. Here on the left pane, we can do some filtering. So if we only wanted to see critical alerts, we can click critical and apply. And then any alert with a severity of critical will come up. And for type, we can filter on alerts that will trigger on any match or alerts that will trigger based on account. So one or more counts of an event come in, this alert will trigger. The origin is the content pack. So if we want to see alerts from our Apache content pack, we can apply. And we can see we have two alerts here from our Apache content pack. And then finally, we can filter by tag. So let's look for alerts that have a cloud services tag. So we check that and we hit apply. You can see here that this Active Directory alert has been tagged with cloud services. So tags are a good way to organize your alerts and search for them if you ever need to drill down with a filter. So let's dig a little deeper and check out these alerts. So from this three-dot menu, you can clone an alert. So if there's an alert from a content pack that you want to make a few modifications to, to be relevant to your environment, you can clone it and make those changes because you cannot modify the original alert from the content pack. So this lets you modify an alert based on cloning. You can also enable and disable alerts for a certain amount of time. So if you're doing maintenance, you can disable an alert for a few hours, and then it will re-enable itself after that threshold. And then we can edit the alert. So our alert edit screen shows a lot of the same information. It shows us if it's snoozed, gives us a description. It gives us the definition. This is looking in all partitions in Login Site Cloud. You can also have an alert search just for a certain partition if you know that event will be going into a different index partition from the standard one. You can do the trigger conditions. So for six hours, if the account of events is greater than one for this event here, it's searching the logs for event ID contains 4649, which is an Active Directory event ID specified by Microsoft, and channel contains security, and provider name contains Microsoft Windows Security Auditing. These are all extracted fields that we have in our Log Explorer, and the alert is just alerting if any of these extracted fields match together. And then we have our tags, the notification for the alert through email should either include logs or certain fields, and then we can add some metadata. We can also optionally add recommendations on what an operator should do if the alert is triggered. And then on the top right, we can clone or view the query. So if we want to view the query that this alert is alerting on right here, we can view that in, in our log explorer, or we can delete an alert if it is not an alert from a content pack. So if it's an alert that we have created ourselves, we can delete it here. Now let's work on creating a new alert in our Explorer log section. So we go to Log Explorer, and I have a favorited query already set for alerting me whenever the vCenter server administrator logs in. So I click on that favorite query, and now we have a breakdown of when the administrator user is logging in based on a pie chart with all of our different vCenters. So if I want to create an alert, I can click here, create an alert based on this query. We can give it some parameters. Search all partitions. This query came from our saved queries. It's looking for text contains logged in for VC username, administrator, router system, any of those three. So the triggering condition is any five minutes, group it by host name, and then we trigger when the account of events is greater than zero. 
and we want the severity to be critical. This is our trigger condition for the alert to trigger. And then we can add a recommendation. We can add a tag. So let's add the security tag. And now we have our alert. Let's save our alert. Now we can see our alert definition, just like before. Let's turn this alert on. We can clone this query, we can delete it, or we can edit it. Now let's look for our alert. And here it is. So now that we have this alert, we can edit to who it goes to under the notification category. So we can add email recipients. So in this case, I will get notified when the count of events is greater than zero or when any administrator logs into one of the monitored B centers. So if we click on our alert definitions now, so if we click on our triggered alerts, we can see that my newly created alert has triggered five times 53 seconds ago. So now we can see that there's an administrator user logging into vCenter and we should probably go talk to them. If we don't want to use email for our alert destinations, we can always configure webhooks. We have a webhook configuration here. So if we click new webhook, we can choose a predefined endpoint such as Datadog, PagerDuty, Slack, or Victor Ops, or we can create our own custom endpoint. We just have to give the destination URL of the application we can give it the content type and the action type. And then we can use a standard login site template, or we can take a template from the destination formatted properly, whether it's JSON or XML, and we can paste it in here. And then we can modify the third party template with some of these parameters. So it accepts it when it is sent via the webhook to the third party application, whether that's an operations tool or a DevOps tool. Once the webhook is received, then you can alert using that application, or you can do some actionable items, such as if there's an alert that comes in saying a virtual machine was created or admin user logged in, we can go and use a third-party tool to either lock down that user or change that virtual machine. So once we create a webhook configuration, all we have to do is go into our alert definition. All we have to do is choose a webhook from here. And now the alert will go to this email and this webhook payload will send it to the destination for further processing. So that's our review of alerts and log inside cloud. As you can see, we have many different alerts, whether they are out of the box alerts from content packs or whether they are custom created, you can choose or create whatever works best for you and your environment. Thank you so much for watching.